Hi guys, my name is Saurabh Porwal, and today we will try to understand how do you explain a DevOps project in your interview. So many a times uh, you have tried practicing your project in, in your own space and then you want to explain it in an interview and you're wondering how do you actually explain this project because you don't want to be caught off guard. you have to be prepared for it. So here are some step-by-step -step process and what you need to keep in mind when you're explaining a DevOps project. So let's have a look at some of these items on uh, what you should be doing. So, so the first thing, the first thing that you need to do is try to understand where you belong in an organization. So as a DevOps engineer, you have to think through how many different teams are involved what is your role in it? What are the other teams doing which, in which you are playing the part? So for example, there can be multiple teams involved. Uh, let's say there's a Java team, there's a CRM team, there can be some operations teams. You have to figure out a role within where you are placed. So are you a part of a centralized DevOps team which is taking all these inputs from different team members and then you are taking some applications and then you are deploying it in some environments. So you have to keep a holistic view of what are your stakeholders, how many different teams are involved and what your position is. Because many a times you will see that the interviewees will struggle when they are being asked as to tell me about the holistic landscape of where you were in terms of your applications, in terms of your team management, in terms of who where your stakeholders are. So create a mental map of who your stakeholders are. So there can be multiple teams which can have, let's say there will be an architect, there will be product owners, there will be configuration managers, system administrators, DBAs, there will be business analysts, developers, testers, scrum masters. So th these are all the different role profiles which are involved in creating an application. As a DevOps engineer, your roles and responsibility might be to deploy this application into multiple environments. It might be to, once it is deployed in production, you might have to do some alerting and monitoring. You might have to manage the applications. So try to have a mental frame of where your application belongs, how complex is the application, what are the different integration points of these applications, and that is that is how you will be able to frame the architecture of your application and explain in detail uh, as to what that application was, what were the different integration points of these applications. And uh, and in a nutshell, you will be able to create a holistic landscape of the application, which is very important. So that's the first thing that you should keep in mind. Don't just jump on the project itself. Uh, try to keep a holistic view first, and then you will be able to explain your project. So whatever project that you are doing, keep a holistic view and the different integration points of that project uh, or, or an application with other applications. Right, so that's the first thing that you should keep in mind. So if you are an experienced DevOps engineer, you would have some sort of idea about these type of different app, uh, source code management, your code analysis, build tools, repository management. So you would already have some sort of idea about whether what are the different tools that you will talk about in the interview, right? So if you are using uh, source code, you're, are you using GitHub or GitLab? Uh, are you using for code analysis, you will be using SonarQ for build and unit test. So you will be referring to your Maven or PIP or any. So it, it is immaterial as to what are the different tools that uh, you will be selecting. But you should have a very thorough understanding of each and every steps that we are talking about here. So we are talking about source code, what it is being used for, what would you use code analysis for, the builds and unit test cases, repository management, what it is being used for. So you should have a complete and thorough understanding of all these different items, including your cloud infrastructure setup, whether you're using Terraform or you're using AWS Cloud Formation, or you're using any code deployments tools. So like an urban code deploy or Ansible or AWS code deploy, whichever tool that you're using. Uh, Similarly goes for your infrastructures, whether it's the cloud servers, EC2 instances, or you're using serverless. Uh, where are you hosting your containers, whether it is Kubernetes, EKS, AKS. Uh, are there any, if it's a large project, there will be some sort of big data involvement. 
so they, it can be like emr uh, or uh, hadoop or any sort of big data or there can be data lakes similarly for testing uh, you will have some tools for release engineering you can have a service now uh, and 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 all these different alerting and monitoring code deployments so when you are talking about your application you should talk about all these different steps which are which are involved in it so in the application so i'm pretty sure that if you if you have been preparing for interviews you would have worked on this profile so having an understanding of what your application is what are these type of different tools involved so irrespective of which tool you are choosing you have to be very thorough of the concepts which are involved in it so rather than focusing on the tool itself try to focus on the different concepts the different fundamentals and that should keep you covered from the tools point of view it's very important to be hands on on these tools don't just look at the tools remember something try and practice hands on and then you will be able to explain some sort of challenges in the that you encountered because it's a very common question where your interviewer will ask you about tell me about the challenges that you faced in uh, uh, let's say uh, when you're deploying something in in kubernetes so try to try to understand all these different challenges try to go through live projects work through projects in your time so that you can explain it to them many of the candidates they just prepare up to this level and then they leave it and they think that their preparation is done but then comes the most important part which is where the in depth interviews take place so in here we'll be talking about the infrastructure and security architecture it is very very common practice to ask about where your infrastructure is deployed and also you need to have a very thorough understanding of how your application behaves so where are all the important components deployed how does the traffic management happen so if a user is coming from the internet where does the user land first so it does it go through internet gateway and then it can be so it it goes through like an aws waf uh, goes through aws shield you, then you will have application load balancers the different types of availability zones uh, the different types of private and public subnets but depending on whatever sort of architecture that you have you need to have a very thorough understanding of how the traffic behaves how the traffic comes into your the cloud how the traffic comes into the region whether it's uh, like all the details of your application so you sh you should actually go and draw this type of diagram uh, so that you are very confident in telling what are where are all the different components placed and what is the role of each component so it's very important to have this sort of infrastructure and security view how the developers manage their code pipelines and how the users will interact uh, when they are interacting with your application so that once you are able to explain this this will give a lot of confidence to the interviewer that you know all these different techniques you know what you are talking about and you understand the flow of traffic in the application uh, it's very important to talk about security the different layers of security whether you are talking about uh, your uh, web application firewalls or you are talking about encryption or you're talking about the different types of subnets that have been created uh, what are the different types of availability zones that you are using are you using multi region applications so have a very detailed map and diagram already available which you really know that you can talk about and for for a project or application it's it's a one time exercise if you have not really done it i would highly encourage that you do that the next level of detail comes when you talk about your authentication and authorization in an application so this is where i have seen many of the candidates uh, they struggle so you have to talk about how the application is authenticated you need to understand about the differences between authentication the difference between authorization now uh, and how a user would go because in any sort of application not everybody can go and access any resource that they want so you have to have a detailed understanding of your application as to how how the resource owner will connect to all these different resources how the client will connect the role of authorization server the role of resource server go and have a read about oauth2 in detail saml uh, in detail 
So these are the different uh, topics. Once you understand SAML and OAuth 2, that should be enough to act for you to explain how your an application or how an application will be authenticated and authorized. So that these are some of the simple tricks which will help you complete your knowledge about explaining how do you explain your project. So you, you you have now an understanding of the whole team setup. You have an understanding of the tools, what are the tools that you will be using. You will have an understanding of what are the different infrastructure and security components, and you will have an understanding of how the authentication and authorization waves. Keep in mind, whenever you are talking about all these points, what your role is, because if you are a part of centralized DevOps team, you will be handling multiple sorts of applications and you will be primarily responsible for deploying these applications into different environments. So you, will be, you might be responsible for managing the applications in production, creating alerting and monitoring techniques. So then you can position yourself in the organization because most of the organizations you see, instead of having just one application, one container, they will be different applications which interact together. There will be different teams which are working on different applications and then that will complete your holistic picture. So I hope this video helps. If you like this video, press the like button. That will help the YouTube algorithm. And that will also uh, tell us that uh, you like these sort of videos and uh, we will be uh, creating more such content. Thank you very much, very much for your time and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.